Hello everyone, myself Vibhu. Today I'm going to discuss about some of the science related GK questions which basically appeared in previous year exams like uh, central level as well as state level. Okay. Uh, we'll see the first question. Short sightedness in the human eye can be corrected by using option A concave lens, option B convex lens, option C cylindrical lens. Option D, plain glass. So what is uh, short-sightedness? Okay. It is one of the common human eye defect. Okay. In generally, we will call it as a myopia, scientific name. Short-sightedness means where the person can see the things which are lying closer to him, but uh, he cannot see the things which are far away from him. For example, something is written on the blackboard. I cannot see that, but which is uh, on my textbook, I can read it. Okay. Those kind of eye defects can be rectified by using concave lens. Okay. Short-sightedness or myopia can be corrected by concave lens. So right answer for the first question is concave lens. How about convex lens? Another one more common eye defect is hypermetropia. In hypermetropia, where the person can see the faraway objects clearly, I mean, something is written on the blackboard, I can read it properly, but which is there on my system or which is there on my books, I cannot see it properly. These kind of eye defects can be rectified by using convex lens. And third one is cylindrical lens. These kind of lenses are used in another common eye defect is astic. Matism. Okay. Where the person will lose its power of accommodation of the eye, where the light cannot converge or diverges. Okay. So, in this kind of situation, is called as astigmatism. So, it can be corrected by using cylindrical lenses. And the fourth option is plain glasses. Plain glasses are used for the decorative purpose, uh, water bottles, or any, you know, the, the, to make a jars, and all this, uh, you know things we will basically use plain glasses. And here we can see the two images. One is concave lens, another one is the convex lens. Uh, what are lenses? Lenses are basically an optical medium, okay, where the light can passes. It will get diverges or converges. Concave lens is a kind of lens uh, whose edges are uh, thicker and middle part is thinner. You can see here, you know, the both the edges are thicker but the middle part is thinner here. So those kind of lenses are called concave lenses. And here you can see the convex lens where the edges, so concave lens can be right as like this. So whose edges are thinner, but the middle part is bulged out. Okay, these are the two common lenses we basically use. So for this question, the right answer is concave lens. We'll move to the second question. White blood cells, WBC, which are responsible for maintenance of immunity of body are produced in which part of the body? Okay, option A, tongue. Option B, thyroid and parathyroid glands. Option C, bone marrow and lymph glands. Option D, ductless glands. So we know that, uh, you know, the white bloods are called as, uh, you know, the soldiers of our body. Okay, they build our immunity, uh, they create the army system in our body, okay, whichever the foreign particles or external things enter our bodies, it's basically fight against it. So white blood cells are very important to maintain the healthy life. So where exactly they produced? Okay, so in generally in our body, the blood is produced inside the bone that is called as bone marrow. Okay, it is a spongy kind of thing which is there inside our bone. So here you can see the uh, image of the bone marrow where generally our blood is manufactured or produced. And in lymph gland, our white bloods are there. Okay, that is one of the important thing we have to remember. So right answer for this question is the option C, bone marrow and lymph glands. 
So remember, blood is manufactured or produced in our body inside the bone. That part is spongy kind of thing called as bone marrow. Okay, how about tongue? We already know that. Uh, whatever I can speak here because of that, uh, the tongue. So tongue is one of the important part of our mouth, our body. So, and which is very important to intake of the food, which will give the taste. Everything is decided by our tongue. So it is one of the essential part of our body. Okay, option B, thyroid and parathyroid glands. Okay, this is one of the important gland in our body. Thyroid glands uh, will produce the hormones and they basically controls or regulates energy which is required for our body. How about parathyroid glands? There are four parathyroid glands are there which are located close to the thyroid gland. And these parathyroid glands basically controls or regulate the calcium amount in our blood, okay? So next fourth one is ductless glands or we will also called as endocrine glands. There are seven important uh, ductless glands are there. So why we will call it as a ductless? Ductless means tubeless or you know uh, connectionless, means whatever they produce hormones that directly dumped into the blood without any support of the tubes. That's why we will call it as a ductless glands. Okay. So right option for this question is option C. The study of population is known as option A, demography, option B, climatology, option C, petrology, option D, hydrology. Okay, the study of population in a particular area, uh, the density, the customs, okay, their cultures, everything we is going to study under demography. So the right answer for this question is option A, demography. Okay. So and option B, climatology, it is a branch of science where we are going to study the climate of the particular area, particular region, how it is going to change with respect to the time, how it is going to vary, how the temperature is going to vary, everything we are going to study under climatology. So it is one of the important branch of science. And option C, petrology, it is again one of the important uh, part of, uh, you know, the science where we are going to study about rocks, okay, the formation of the rocks, how the rocks are formed, when they formed, how they formed, what is the lifespan of, I mean, uh, what, what is the life age of the, uh, that particular rock or, uh, you know, the clips, whatever may be, that is comes under the petrology. Next one is hydrology. The hydro means water basically. So in hydrology, again, it is one of the important uh, branch of science where we are going to study about the uh, availability of the water, uh, its nature, where it is formed, the origination, and how it is related with the environment, how it is related with the living beings, everything we are going to study in hydrology. So, but right answer for this question, where the study of population is called as demography. Option A. Okay. Next fourth question. When the sun reaches its maximum distance from the equator, it is known as option A, solitis, option B, eclipse, option C, equinox, option D, sidereal day. Okay. So the right answer for this question is option A, solitis. So in this image, we can see that there are two kinds of solitis are there. One is in the day of June 20 or June 21st, okay, where it is at the maximum distance from the equator, you can see here. And another one is the December 21st or December 22nd, important days where we will generally say solitis days. Okay, and how about, uh, you know, eclipse, I will study in our next question, no problem, when detail we'll study there. Okay, option C is here. Okay, equinox. So here you can see the two equinox are there, where the, you know, oh, it is at the particular distance from the earth. Okay, so here I can say that March 20th is one equinox day and September 22nd or 23rd is another equinox day in a year. Okay, so we have to remember this. 
in some other exams, they asked about these questions. So solitis days and equinox days. Next one is side real day. It is a day and it is the time how long a earth will take to rotate in its axis. So basically, we will say that 24 hours, right? But it is actually 23 hours, okay, 56 minutes and 4 seconds. This much duration will be taken by our earth to rotate in its own axis. That is called as side real day. But right answer for this question is solid is option A. Okay. Next fifth question is, which gas constitutes 78% of the atmosphere? Option A, carbon dioxide. Option B, organ gas. Option C, oxygen. Option D, nitrogen. Okay. In 100%, Okay, our atmosphere is basically contains different kind of gases. Out of this 100%, okay, nitrogen is the gas which is in the form of 78%. So maximum part of the atmosphere is contained nitrogen gas. Okay, and another 21%, 78% is nitrogen, another 21% is by our oxygen. So one of the most important gas for our life, okay, that is oxygen, that is 21%. Another 1%, okay, another 1% by other gases like organ or rare gases, different kind of gases are filled in our atmosphere, that is 1%, okay. So the right answer for this question is option D, nitrogen. Next six question. Which one of the following may have alien life because of a very conductive environment to life? Okay. So option A, Jupiter. Option B, Mars. Option C, Europa. That is the Jupiter's moon. Option D, moon. The Earth's moon. Okay. All right. So right answer for this question is option B, Mars. Mars having the similar uh, atmosphere or environment of our Earth. So where they believe that scientists say that, you know, there might be chances of, uh, you know, uh, like aliens. Aliens are the space, uh, you know, uh, life. Okay, they are kind of uh, living beings. We believe that it is there in the uh, other planets. So right answer for this question is Mars. How about Jupiter? Jupiter is another uh, planet in our solar system. Okay. So it basically contains total 79 planets. Next one is Europa. That is uh, Jupiter's uh, moon. Okay. Jupiter, as I said here, it has 79 uh, total moons. Out of that, Europa is the one of the uh, moon. Okay. If you go to the Jupiter, you can see 79 moons. Okay. Next one. Option D is moon, okay? We can see on from our earth, right? Earth is having only one moon, that is our moon, all right? But right answer for this question is option B, Mars, okay? Which has the basic environment for the alien life. Seventh question, India's permanent research station, Dakshina Gangotri, is situated in the Option A, Great Himalayas. Option B, Indian Ocean. Option C, Antarctica. Option D, Arabian Sea. But the right answer for this question is Option C, Antarctica. Okay, Dakshina Gangotri is one of the India's prestigious research uh, center where the continuously the research is going on. So the right answer for this question is Option C, Antarctica. Okay. It was established in the year of John 26, 1984. Okay, it is an important date we have to remember. Okay, so it is a research station or the center where continuously all biological, physical experiments uh, must be done there. Okay, so all right, we'll move to the next question.
eighth one which one of the following is the unit of activity of a radioactive sources option a lux option b b quiral option c tesla option d candela what is the radioactive sources okay the radioactive substances are the sources which basically continuously emits neutrons atoms okay the best example i can give you that uh, you know the radium is one of the most radioactive source available in this nature okay it will continuously emit alpha rays uh, beta rays gamma rays okay so it can be measured how much you know the substance uh, or atoms coming out of a particular substance is measured with the help of unit called b quiral so right answer for this question is b quiral okay it is the scientist name okay so right answer for the eighth question is b quiral how about lux option a option a is basically consider as a unit of luminous area if any source of light source i mean okay any source of uh, light how much light it will produce and how much light it will fall on the particular area that can be measured with the help of lux okay so if any source let me say that we have one candle that will produce some light right it will fall in particular area how much light will fall on the particular area that is measured with the help of unit lux next option c is tesla tesla is another important unit of magnetic flux density it is measured with tesla okay also we will call represent with capital t okay next option d candela candela is the one of the important si unit basically used to represent okay so if i say that any source of light is there how much light is coming out of that i have a candle light here i have a kerosene lamp here so which one way is giving more light that we we have to measure with one particular unit that unit is called candela so candela is the si unit of luminous intensity okay but the right answer for this question is b quiral all right we'll move to the next question ninth one the solar eclipse occurs when option a is the sun comes between the moon and the earth option b the earth comes between the sun and the moon and option c the moon comes between the sun and the earth option d none of these okay solar eclipse means where the moon will come between the sun and the earth okay so the right answer for this question is option c moon comes between the sun and the earth so shortcut to remember this s m e okay solar eclipse here is the image is there sun moon and the earth okay so next one is in generally we use lunar eclipse so lunar eclipse is a kind of eclipse where the earth will come between the sun and the moon where the sunlight will not fall on the moon okay it is represented with s e m s m we can remember the shortcuts okay lunar eclipse and solar eclipse but for this question the right answer is option c the moon comes between the sun and the earth okay all right we'll move to the next question which one of the following statement is correct in respect of geostationary satellites what are geostationary satellites okay satellites are the celestial bodies which basically will be there in the space there are two types of satellites are there one is man made satellite 
another one is the natural satellite our earth is having only one satellite that is our moon okay next one is geostationary satellite geo means earth stationary means which is at uh, you know rest where the earth is continuously rotating and revolving when these satellites will revolve i mean uh, with the speed of earth only if the earth is moving so in the same speed even the this satellite will move it will basically take 24 hours to complete one rotation okay so that is the rotation taken by the earth itself to complete one rotation right so that kind of satellites are called geostationary satellites so the time period is uh, you know 24 hours we have to remember it is looks fixed if you look at that particular uh, satellite uh, you know it will be fixed because we are also rotating even that also rotating with the same speed of the earth all right and in generally it will be placed around you know the 36 kilometer from the earth surface okay so option a is it moves in a plane containing the greenwich meridian Option B, it moves in a plane perpendicular to celestial equatorial plane. Option C, its height above the Earth's surface is about the same as the radius of the Earth. What is the radius of the Earth? It is around 6,400 kilometers. Remember this, it is the radius of the Earth I'm talking about. And option D, its height above the Earth's surface is about the six times the radius of the earth as i told here okay basically geostationary satellites are kept at the height of placed at the height of 36 kilometer okay if uh, we are saying its height is above the earth surface is about six times means that is uh, six into six 36 so here 36 000 kilometer height means the right answer for this question is okay option d Okay, so its height above the Earth's surface is about six times the radius of the Earth. All right, for the tenth question, option is D. It is very important question. Okay, don't get confusion in the option C. They have mentioned, uh, you know, the same. Same means uh, it will be around uh, six six and a half kilo uh, thousand kilometers above the Earth's surface. No, it is not possible and it's very wrong answer so remember it is six times the radius of the earth okay all right uh, so thanks for watching so keep uh, you know waiting and uh, subscribe for my channel so i'll be uh, updating a few more questions in my upcoming classes thank you very much and all the best for your exams